The Library of Congress Packard Campus for Audiovisual Conservation in Culpeper, Virginia, preserves and provides access to the library's vast collection of films, television programs, radio broadcasts, and sound recordings. American History TV visited the facility to learn about the paper print collection, films from the earliest era of motion pictures produced between 1894 and 1912. Over 3,000 paper prints were created for copyright purposes but cannot be projected. They must be scanned one frame at a time in order to be copied. At the very beginning of cinema, the vast majority of films that were produced were not what we would think of as fictional films. They were, were called actualities, or little documentaries, showing everyday life, people at work, people at leisure, uh, current events. Uh, so there was a tremendous amount of that. And one of the examples that, that I have here actually comes from 1904. Uh, this is a series of films that was shot by the American Mutoscope and Biograph Company. It's part of a series called the Westinghouse Works. As this was shot for the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis, there were roughly 29 films that were uh, produced for this series, of which 21 survive in the paper print collection. So this chronicles several factories that were owned by Westinghouse. This one is called the Panorama, the Machine Company Isle. Beautiful, beautiful film. It was taken essentially from an, an overhead crane uh, that was uh, moving along a, a, a track there in the factory and showing people below on the factory floor doing their work. It's a wonderful, just a, a amazing record of what American industry looked like at this particular time. Um, and so uh, these films were, were uh, incredibly popular when they were shown in 1904 in St. Louis. They had special screenings for the Westinghouse employees in uh, uh, Pitt Pittsburgh. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, these, you will see these films used a lot uh, in documentaries. These films were commissioned by Westinghouse, so they were paid for, and uh, American Mutoscope and Biograph actually shot them. The cameraman for these films is a man named Billy Bitzer, who becomes much more well-known in film history because he was the chief cameraman for D.W. Griffith later on. So, but these are, are very important and beautiful films that, that uh, Mr. Bitzer shot for Westinghouse. The intent of these films was to show the work as it was progressing, not to have anything set up, uh, not being staged. Uh, certainly, there, when you look at the film, there, there, you're going to see people who are looking up at the camera. I mean, this is something that you're not going to see every day. But by and large, there's far too much activity going on to, on the floor for it to be staged. So it's. Just the, the, you know, just it, it's fascinating to watch as a as a document of American industry at the time. In 1904, a film like this, an actuality like this, would not really have been novel at all because there'd been a lot of films that were made like that. But the way in which these were shot, uh, the the sort of chronicling of a lot of activity of in a particular aspect of American industry, that was very unique. And certainly a shot like this one, the panorama of the machine company aisle, is very unique just because of the camera angle that Bitzer was able to get. And the vast expanse of this factory floor is, it's, to this day, it remains an astonishing film to watch.